welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We're going to do a little two-on-two -two challenge, or two-on-two, one-on-one challenge, <laughs> two-on-two, like a basketball game, right? <laughs> so we have two wines here, both Pinot Noir, that's all I know. I put a bunch of Pinot Noir, and I said, Susie, could you please pick two out, and then I'll taste them. In the blind format, just two wines, see which one comes out on top. So let's get started right away. I love Pinot Noir. Uh, this is the time of year for Pinot Noir. It's summertime, salmon. Pinot Noir is perfect with salmon, good with salads, ham, that sort of thing. So, we'll go right first. To the right first. Rinse. Yeah, I went on a little bit of a, um, I had a little bit of absence, as you noticed, on my YouTube channel. You know, sometimes I let things get control of my life, and I don't like that. So, Pinot Noir, color. I just uh, reviewed the Empathy Wines from Gary Vaynerchuk. That was fun. I, I really liked them. Uh, hopefully you check out that episode. That was the one before this one. Okay, so decently dark. You can see kind of through it. It's got a little red hue on, underneath. Yeah, like that. Actually, you can almost see right through it on the glass. Let's see what we get on the nose. Get a little uh, root beer and cola. A little Coca-Cola action. Cherries and red flowers. Pretty aromatic on this, baby. I, I even get a little hit of licorice. It smells bright to me, you know, like you can smell the acidity, like it feels like it's going to be mouth-watering. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palate. So, you know, Pinot Noir from uh, Oregon, even California, sometimes I'll get that, they, you know, the uppity-ups called sarsaparilla. Uh, I call it root beer because basically the same thing. I know sarsaparilla is a really bit more uh, refined smell, so that's a good good smell. Uh, a way to say it, but and you'll get cola sometimes on the nose with Pinot Noir. This has an earthy kind of a red earth thing going on as well. Let's see what we get on the palate. Good acidity, a little thin, just a touch thin. That earth comes through. I get almost a sour cherry uh, element coming that through. Um, very sour cherry. Even a little bit of strawberry. And right at the back end, I get a little bit of that sarsaparilla. Slight cranberry hit on the mid-palate going into the finish. This needs food. I guarantee you it. I, I like it. It's a little thin, though. You know, not super excited about it, but it's okay. You know what I mean? And so I know the Pinots that are okay. Depending on the price, you know, tells you whether or not it's worth buying. Cranberry, sour cherry, a little bit of root beer on the backside. Earthy notes coming through on the back end. A little bit thin. Now, Pinot can be thin, of course. You started getting into burgundies. But I will tell you, one time I ta I've tasted quite a few burgundies that are not thin. I think this is okay. Um, like I said, I'm not super excited. But I wouldn't pass it up depending on the price. All right. Let's move on to the next one. I know I've had quite a few comments, a lot of people like these blind things, so I'm just going to do a two, you know, two at a time. Why not? A little bit of a two, one-on-one -on -one challenge. See who comes out on top. Right or left. See what we get on the nose. This is much uh, deeper fruit on the nose for sure. I get a little bit of chocolate and licorice. Dark cherries. Dark ripe cherries, you know. Bite into a dark, I love dark cherries, by the way. 
Not just a maybe a trace of root beer. But definitely getting those chocolate uh, ripe cherry notes. This has California sunshine written all over it. This could be Burgundy, uh, Oregon, Burgundy. Definitely not. Could well, Cal uh, Washington doesn't do too many Pinot Noir, but it could be Washington, uh, but not California. This smells has California all over the nose. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palate. A wet spot. Big. I mean, I forgot to show you the color. Just see how much darker this one is. Way darker. Okay. This has a nice spice thing on the back, on the back of the finish. It is chocolate covered cherries, a little bit of spice, a little bit of white pepper, and it is fruit forward, for sure. Almost get a little brown sugar thing coming through. Good balance. I mean, this is a style that I don't always go after. It's it's you know it's fruit forward. It definitely has California sunshine all over it. A um, little bit of that brown sugar element, chocolate, cherries. You know, good balance. So I mean, it's it's what it it is what it is. Let's just put it that way. There's a lot of people that will like this one. There's a lot of people that will like that one. Entirely different animals. Completely different animals. I'm calling Burgundy or Oregon. This is definitely has to be California. This is one you could. This is a dangerous Pinot Noir. I'll tell you why. Because you start drinking, you could just chug the whole bottle down. If you have a sweet tooth, this is for the sweet tooth in the bunch. If you brought this to a party, you would be the hero of the party. You would be the everybody going, oh, that's such a good wine. You know, because at a party, you have no idea unless you're going to a, a, a wine event with a bunch of uh, guys that you know do not like fruit forward wines, they wouldn't like this. But you know what? That doesn't happen very often when you go into somebody's house. This is a crowd pleaser. And you know, there's no flaws. It's just a little too fruit forward for me. I don't necessarily go for that style in Pinot Noir. But it still would be good with salmon and ham. Beef jerky would be great with this. Salmon jerky fantastic. Uh, we make a cool little salmon cream cheese dip at King's Market when they do it. This would be fantastic with that. So I'm going to call them even as far as I'm going to go B minus B on both of these. I think they're for what they are they're about equal in quality. Uh, this is just a touch thin but I think it shows real a good characteristic of a Pinot Noir. This is just big, uh, almost what you'd call unctuous Pinot Noir, but there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you like. So they're both the same. So let's see what we have here. B minus B. On the right hand side we have, oh there you go, the Forest Pinot Noir Estate Grown Rogue Valley, Oregon 2018. This rolls in at $18. 2018, 18 bucks. Yeah, pretty cool. There you go. So if you like that kind of sour cherry, cranberry, you know, element in a Pinot Noir, this is a good Pinot, food Pinot Noir. It's a B minus B for the, what you get is pretty good. Just saying. And on the left, with exactly the same, neither one beat out either one. Neither one beat out either one. Does that make any sense? Anyway. <laughs> is the, uh, okay, 2018, same vintage sea glass. Sea Sun, excuse me, Sea Sun, California Pinot Noir. Um, sea Sun is a Wagner family product, and this rolls in at $20. So they're pretty close, $3 more. There you go, Sea Sun, Pinot Noir. They did about the same. They're both good for different reasons. Not my style, but a lot of people would love it. Not exactly what I'm looking for in Pinot Noir either, but 
A lot of people, especially old world wine drinkers, would love it. If you like Burgundy, you would love this one. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. More and more subscribers I want to reach. I'd like to reach 500 by the end of the year. So tell your friends. Hey, there's this well, you got worse, cool t-shirts. Let me do this one. Hope you're enjoying them. You keep watching. And I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.